Last year, I posted a review on some of the best duffel bags for travel. And in this video, I wanted to share with you some great bags that I didn't cover last year. Here I have the Peak Designs Travel Duffel, the Timbuktu Wander Backpack Duffel, the Tortuga Set Out Duffel, and the Air Travel Backpack. Thanks again and enjoy the video. There are still a ton of travel duffel bags I haven't looked at yet, and over the next couple months, I'll be reviewing and testing these. Specifically, I'll be looking at bags by Tom Bin, Best American Duffels, Red Ox, Mystery Ranch, The North Face, and Boundary Supply. So if you like reviews like this, then please stick around by subscribing to our channel. And as usual, if you have any suggestions on travel duffels, backpacks, then please let me know in the comments below. I chose these four bags because they're similar in a lot of ways. They're all moderately priced bags in the range from 35 to 40 liters. They're all carry-on sized with similar dimensions. However, these bags are very different in terms of material, features, organization, and carry style. I'll compare the features and show you how big the bags are and how comfortable they are to wear. And I'll include detailed specs on each bag in the description below in case I missed anything and timestamps on each section if you wanna jump ahead. Let's start by looking at the hardware and the materials, starting from the thinnest to the thickest. Peak Design uses a 400 denier nylon canvas for this top material and a thicker 900 denier polyester with a TPU coated bottom fabric. The Timbuktu has a 420 denier ripstop with a TPU coating, giving it a rough shiny exterior. Tortuga uses a thicker 900 denier fabric switching from a polyester instead of nylon on these other bags. And then finally, the Air uses the thickest 1680 denier Ballistic Cordura. It's a solid bomb-proof fabric that feels softer than the other three bags. None of these bags are waterproof, but they offer different levels of water resistance. The Peak Designs bag is the most waterproof. The top fabric is treated with a DWR, making it very water resistant, while the bottom has a thicker, virtually waterproof coating and they also use waterproof zippers. Timbuktu also uses a thick TPU coated fabric similar to a Patagonia black hole duffel which is virtually waterproof but not the seams or zippers. Tortuga has a DWR coating on the exterior fabric but it doesn't use any waterproof zippers. And then the air has water resistant fabric but this is mostly due to the dense basket weave material and not because of any kind of waterproof coating. They do use some really nice looking water resistant zippers on this front slash pocket, but the bag isn't waterproof and it will leak in the rain. Each of these bags uses great zippers and hardware. The Air Duffel has the best zippers, while the Peak Design bag uses the best hardware. The zippers on the Air Duffel are what I wanna see used in all travel backpacks. They're huge reverse coil nylon locking on this main number 10 on these two with water resistant front slash pocket and laptop compartment zippers. They're heavier and stiffer than some smaller zippers, but I love using them and these custom pull tabs work great. The buckles are all a solid thick plastic Duraflex brand buckle with this metal lobster claw that attaches the shoulder strap. Peak Design uses great large number 10 size zippers on the main compartment and then number eight on the two side compartments. This one and the main one have a water resistant lining but I have to ding them a little bit for going with an off-brand company called Zoom instead of YKK. The hardware is solid with aluminum hooks for the carry handles and then a leather accent handle and accent tabs. I do question their choice of the fiberglass reinforced nylon buckle for the shoulder strap though, instead of the aluminum. Tortuga as always uses solid brand name hardware with literally the exact same Duraflex buckles as used in the Air Duffel. The zips are great. They have locking YKK with custom pull tabs, but I always wish that they used a slightly larger number 10 instead of a number eight on this main compartment. Timbuktu does a decent job here, but falls short compared to the other three bags. They use large number eight YKK with double zips on the exterior pockets. However, the slide is slightly stiff and tends to catch when going around the inside seam on the main and the laptop compartment. The hardware isn't quite as good and the buckle that attaches the shoulder strap has some issues which I'll cover later. If you're looking to trim weight this travel season, the Peak Designs duffel wins here. At just 2.0 pounds, this thing is pretty minimalist as far as duffels go. There's definitely some lighter bags out there like the Patagonia Black Hole and the Eagle Creek cargo hauler bag. 
And this thing is actually coming in at 2.34 pounds, which is about a third of a pound heavier than what they have listed on their website. The air duffel is about two and a half pounds. And despite the really thick material they use on this bag, it still comes in pretty decent weight for a travel duffel. And I'm coming in at 2.54 pounds. So pretty much exactly what they listed on the website. The Timbuktu and the Tortuga are much heavier bags with the Wander duffel coming in at about 3.7 pounds. And this thing is actually on my scale, 3.4 pounds, which is actually about a third of a pound lower than what they listed on the website, which is kind of unusual. And then the Tortuga bag, which is listed at a pretty high 3.8 pounds, actually coming in a little bit lower on my scale also at about 3.54 pounds. It's a little bit more challenging to pack light when you have a bag that's as heavy as these two, but it's still possible. I have a packing demo where I show how to pack the Timbuktu Wander Duffel at under seven kilogram weight. As far as the dimensions go, I'll post the specs in the description below for all these bags. And note that the Air and the Tortuga Duffels have a 35 liter capacity with roughly the max standard carry-on dimensions of 22 by 14 by nine inches or 56, 36 by 23 centimeters. The Peak Design Duffel is also 35 liters, but it's listed on the website as a 10 inch height, which is slightly above most airline restrictions. I have this thing packed pretty full right now and I'm only getting about a nine inch height on this thing. So as long as you don't overpack this thing, it's soft sided, you're gonna be fine. Same thing for the Wander Duffel. This thing is a little bit larger at a 40 liter bag and it's listed slightly over on the website on the length and the width. It's about 23 inches length here. And note that the capacity on these soft sided bags varies greatly depending on what you put in them. You can expand this material to go way over the dimensions, or if you underpack it, then you could definitely be under. And the same thing on the width there. I'm actually only getting 14 inches, so as long as you don't overpack this bag, you'll be okay. Now let's look at the external components on these duffels, starting with the external organization. If you're looking for pockets, the Tortuga duffel wins hands down. It has two huge organizational compartments on each end of the bag with further interior pockets, dividers, and mesh sleeves, as well as two slash pockets on either end of the bag. And these pouches for the side carry handle straps that you could also use for storage. And then a huge end shoe compartment, which can easily fit two pairs of running shoes. The Timbuktu duffel has less organization than the setup, but it still has a lot. With this large end compartment, the mesh zipper on one side of the bag, and this large water resistant shoe compartment on the other side. And then additionally, two small slash pockets on the top of the bag. The Peak Design has slash pockets and these large organizational pockets on each side of the bag. And well, you can fit quite a bit in these pockets when the bag is empty, when it's full, they don't really have a whole lot of their own volume. So your capacity is gonna be greatly reduced. And then the Air Duffel has the fewest pockets, but I still think great organization. It has a large front facing slash pocket that opens up into this large compartment. It has a little seam here, so it gives it its own volume in it actually has quite a large capacity. Inside are four dividers in a little zippered pocket. And then additionally, there's a small little slosh pocket here in the back that's about good enough for a good sized cell phone. Three of these bags also have external dedicated laptop sleeves, the Tortuga, the Air, and the Timbuktu duffel. Well, the Peak Designs doesn't have a dedicated external laptop compartment. The Tortuga is my least favorite of these. It has a well padded sleeve, but it's kind of small. It's only big enough for about a 13 inch laptop and my 15 inch Dell just doesn't fit in there. It also doesn't have a false bottom for some reason, but there's a small amount of padding here, but the compartment pretty much goes down to the bottom of the bag, leaving, leaving it vulnerable to damage. The Air and the Timbuktu can both easily fit a 15 inch laptop. The Timbuktu here has a couple layers of thin padding between the backpack straps and the laptop compartment. This thing also has a false bottom that stops 
right here in the seam, keeping it off the bottom of the bag. Well, that pocket on the air duffel opens from the side, giving you easy access to the laptop because this bag is designed to stand up on its own, like a briefcase style. This thing is pretty large, easily fits my 15 inch laptop. However, there is no false bottom on this bag. It goes down to the bottom here and there is padding down here, but it's not a lot. And then for some reason, Air only provides a single non-locking zipper on this laptop compartment and there's no loop or anything nearby. So there's really no way to lock this thing. And then it's kind of unusual for a duffel bag to have an external water bottle pocket, but the air duffel has one on the end. It's quite large with an elastic band and this gusseted side panel. It can easily fit a one ounce collapsible water bottle, 27 ounce water bottle, or just kind of a standard one liter Nalgene. And of course you don't have to use water bottles in this thing. You could put an umbrella in here or a rolled up jacket. Compression straps aren't common on duffels either, but the Air Duffel and the Timbuktu Wander Duffel both have them. The Timbuktu is set up like a travel backpack with a duffel opening. So it makes more sense that this thing is gonna have these compression straps on either side of the bag. They do kind of block the main zipper though, but they're nice. Just squish the bag down and make sure you're not going over the dimensions. And then the Air Duffel has two small buckles on the top of the bag. They don't do a ton to compress it. They're kind of short, but they're nice because they don't get in the way of the main zipper or the laptop compartment. And then this bag is designed with a flat bottom to set there on its own flat like a briefcase. So it makes sense that they wouldn't put them also on the bottom. Now let's look at the carry options on these four duffels. The Air and the Tortuga both only have a crossbody shoulder strap. Well, the Peak Design and the Timbuktu bag both have backpack straps. The Tortuga and Peak Design both have double top grab carry handles. And then the Timbuktu and the Air both have these top grab briefcase style carry handles. The Peak Design straps look really nice with this thick seat belt webbing material that tapers down into a leather handle which is soft, but it's thin and doesn't have much padding. The Tortuga handles are just as durable with nylon straps and a padded Velcro handle that doesn't look as nice, but is much more comfortable to carry. The Timbuktu and the Air both have these briefcase style carry handles. They're a similar style nylon fabric covered in a firm foam pad, but this Air one right here is quite a bit thicker and a lot more comfortable to carry. For the crossbody shoulder strap, Tortuga's is by far the most comfortable. It's wide and made from two types of foam, this firm backing material, and then a softer padded foam on the front with mesh air ventilation. It attaches with these buckles that are offset on either end of the bag. I found this allows the bag to sit comfortably, either on my hip or slightly behind my back. The Air and the Peak Designs padding on the shoulder straps is similar. The Peak Design straps is quite a bit longer, while the Air strap is much thicker and softer. The orientation on the Air duffel is set up really similar, kind of a suitcase style with this up and down orientation. So I found this thing also sits pretty nicely either on my hip or on my back. And then Timbuktu drops the ball here and doesn't come with a crossbody shoulder strap option at all. The Peak Designs duffel, the shape is a little bit more blocky. Kind of the orientation of the bag is horizontal as opposed to the other two, which were more vertical. And the shoulder strap is comfortable, but I found the bag sits a little bit more, a little more blocky on my hip. Kind of tends to sag around a little bit. So Peak Designs gives you a bunch of straps, options for the carry handles and the backpack straps, and you can kind of switch around and experiment with the orientation on the strap. You can either put it offset on the sides here, or I found the way that's much more comfortable for me is just to attach the shoulder straps to the loops, both on the same side of the bag. And then it kind of sits here in this vertical orientation. It feels a lot more comfortable. On your head. The Timbuktu is the only bag with legit backpack straps. They're moderately padded with a removable sternum strap, but no top load adjusters. You can stow them away by detaching 
the shoulder straps with this plastic buckle, which is flimsy and tends to come undone on its own. And the sternum strap is also not attached to the bag and tends to just slide down. I found this bag to be comfortable to wear even when fully packed. It sits close to my back here. and doesn't really seem like it needs the load adjusters. The biggest problem that I have with this backpack is the sternum strap's not attached. So these things, when you unclip it, these things tend to just fall down and get lost here in the bottom of the straps. You can convert the top carry handles into a backpack by detaching one of the ends from the side loops and reattaching it to these loops on the end of the bag. These straps are thin, they don't really have any padding, and they're not adjustable. I find this really isn't a very comfortable way to carry the bag. Now comparing the internal organization and components on these bags. The openings are slightly different, with Peak Designs opening from the top with one long main zipper into this large compartment. There are a couple small classic Peak Designs rubber mesh pockets down here, but not a whole lot else. The Timbuktu has a large U-shaped opening lid that opens from the side with two smaller mesh pockets here on the lid, but no other further organization except for this attach compression strap clip down. Air also has a U-shaped opening, but the zipper goes around the side of the bag, very similar to the travel backpack, but opens from the side instead of from the top. The interior is basically just one large main compartment with a large mesh zipper here on the top lid. The Tortuga also opens from the top with one large straight zipper opening to this main compartment. The volume on this bag is split between these end compartments and the main compartment. So the packing style in this bag is gonna be completely different than those other ones. And you can use packing cubes, but you're gonna be kind of stacking them on end here instead of lying them flat. Now we'll do a quick capacity test to compare the volume on these four bags. The Peak Design Air and Tortuga is all listed at 35 liters, while the Timbuktu is slightly larger at a 40 liter bag. However, the capacity listed by the companies isn't always accurate. To be consistent, I'll take this pile of clothes here and I'll pack them into one bag, and then I'll transfer that to the other bags to see how it compares as far as volume goes. I think loose clothes work well for these capacity demonstrations because you can fit them in all the little cracks and corners. I started with the Tortuga set out duffel because these things always tend to have a pretty large capacity. And I tried to be fair by packing it as tight as I could get without making it too compact and without having the bag be bulgy. So next I'll transfer all the clothes from the set out into the Peak Designs bag and see how it compares. So that's looking pretty close here. I can definitely shut the lid pretty easily without having to squish it down. And it's about the same capacity as that Tortuga. It's full, pretty much the same. And now the air duffel bag. This thing, while it's listed as the same capacity, it just looks quite a bit smaller. So I was able to fit everything into here. It's a little bit harder to close these zippers though. Kind of have to squish it down. But this bag is a little fuller than the other two. I would say it's maybe not quite exactly a 35 liter capacity, maybe a little bit smaller, but close. And then finally, the Timbuktu Wander Duffel. This bag is actually listed at a 40 liter bag, so it should be able to easily fit all these clothes with room to spare. And it looks pretty much like that's what happened. You can easily close the lid without having to compress it and the bag is pretty much full but a little bit looser than the other ones and i could have fit a little bit more in here so i think the capacity on all these bags this thing is probably about a 40 liter bag the other two 35 and then the air might be a little bit smaller maybe like a 32 or 33 liters in summary all of these duffels are great for travel they're all moderately priced bags in the 35 to 40 liter range with similar carry-on friendly dimensions 
If you're looking for organization and comfort, the Tortuga is a great choice. The bag has a huge number of compartments, dividers, slash pockets, a laptop, and a shoe compartment, while still having a large main compartment. And the shoulder stair carry strap is the most comfortable of the three. But this comes at the cost of the weight. All the pockets and dividers add up to a bag that's 3.8 pounds, and I think they went a little bit too far with the number of pockets on this bag. If you're looking for a more comfortable carry, the Timbuktu is the only one of these bags with real backpack straps. The Wander Duffel has thick water-resistant fabric, large end compartments with decent organizational pockets, and a huge duffel-style main compartment. However, this bag lacks a crossbody shoulder strap, and the sternum strap isn't attached and tends to get lost down here at the bottom of the bag. And these buckles for attaching the shoulder strap are flimsy and tend to come unclasped on their own. If you're looking for a more minimalist setup, the Peak Designs and the Air Duffel are great choices. And at just two pounds, the Peak Design Duffel is the lightest of the three. This bag keeps the tradition of a classic duffel bag by focusing on a large volume main compartment, while at the same, same time still providing good organization with two end compartments, several mesh dividers, and two slash pockets. And finally, the Air Travel Duffel is a sleek, business-friendly, briefcase-style backpack. It has good organization with a large front pocket that has its own volume and in several interior dividers and pockets. It has comfortable carry strap, top grab handles, a large water bottle pocket, and a large main compartment that's easy to pack. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions about any of the bags that I've shown here, then please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And again, if you like videos like this, bag reviews, bag comparisons, packing demos, then please subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching.